Hi guys, it's Kelly and I'm back with another video sponsored by Simon Says Stamp. Today I'm going to be using a, another new stamp set from the Inkblot shop. This is called Smarty Pants and it's super cute. So basically it's um, kind of like a little geeky set um, with all these little lab coats and um, beakers and just chemistry and all these little things. But what I'm going to use it for is something a little different. So I am going to build a scene but I'm going to do it in three parts. So typically you guys will leave me comments and you're like, that looks amazing and it's awesome, but I could never do that. Not true. It's totally not true. You could totally do the exact same thing that I do. And we're going to break it down in three parts so that you can see how manageable it is. So this is going to be card one and then there'll be two, which is like an intermediate level. And then three, which is like the whole shebang, how I would normally do it full blown 30 minute video. Um, but we're going to start with this one. So here I'm stamping my two little characters in, what did I use? Intense Black Ink by Simon Says Stamp. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my Mini Misty to stamp my sentiment. The reason I'm using the Mini Misty is because later on video three, I'm going to be stamping the sentiment again and I want it to be in the exact same place. So here I've got them stamped down, they're masked, and then I wanted to include this little exclamation point because I thought it was super cute, you know, like really emphatic way to go. But it was kind of a pain to line up on my Misty, so I just stamped it by itself. I'm using Eclipse masking paper and I'm going to do just a um, ink blended distress background. So this is something that I see all the time, a lot of crafters do, and um, if ink blending you might like need some practice at. Um, you want to start off your page, super light hand, um, and then bring it onto your paper as you're rotating it. So you want to be using circles. I did not fold my mask over the bottom of my cardstock. That was my fault. And so I kept catching the corner of the edge, which was kind of annoying. But anyway, I'm just going to go give them a little blue halo, the suggestion of a background around my characters. I'm going to flip that mask over and then I'm going to give the suggestion of some ground with the hickory smoke, which is like a lightish gray distress ink. So once I do that, so I'm going to put that down. I'm not taking, I didn't take the blue all the way up and I'm not taking the hickory smoke all the way down. I just want to put some color behind my characters so that it gives, like I said, just that suggestion, the illusion of a background. I'm going to go ahead and remove my masks. And then I'm going to Copa color these little guys. I thought that they were so cute. Um, they got their little lab coats on and this one kind of looks like Albert Einstein with crazy hair there. Um, but so I'm going to give him a traditional white lab coat. So I'm using um, C1, C3, C5. When you're coloring anything white, you want to make sure you're leaving white in the object, whatever it is. So for his coat, I'm leaving that center uh, white. I tend to color as if my light source is in the top right hand corner. So that's how I'm doing the shading. So there's going to be shading underneath that collar, shading on the left hand side of his body. I am adding a little bit of shading to the right hand side of his body because I want to give him a more 3D or a round appearance, which for this coat, the it looks like the right hand side is underneath the left since the left side has the button. Um, so that's why I added just a little bit of shading along that center line to the right hand side. For his mustache, I'm using the same colors. I'm just doing kind of little flicks, little lines of color so that his mustache has some texture. He's got this crazy furry mustache there and I wanted to make sure that it looked really full. For his hair, um, I'm you could do this as a smoother look by adding the peaks and valleys into his hair. I'm not. I like He looked like Albert Einstein to me with crazy wild curly hair and that's how I'm coloring it. So I started with the C1 and I'm just doing scribble circles. When I go in with the darkest color, which is going to be the C5, I'm adding it definitely to that under um, that part right there on the right hand side because it looks like it's underneath the side and the left. But then I'm really kind of just concentrating it toward the back and the center. I'm leaving the front of his face lighter. I'm going to go back over the hair with the C3 and then again with the C1. Copics are transparent. You put a lighter color over a darker color and it will lift it. So then I'm going to move on to the skin tones. 
So this is kind of my go-to skin tone. I did a video um, recently where I covered several different skin tones. This particular combination was not in there. Um, so I will link to that at the end of the video in case you're interested in seeing that. That also actually uses Ink Blot Shop uh, stamps. So again, light source in the top right hand corner. His big furry hair is going to cast a shadow onto his face all over. Hers, because she has just a one layer kind of bob going on, is really just going to be where the uh, side bang kind of like swoops over her face and then the right hand side of her face would be darker because it's away from my light source. So doing that, I'm also adding a little bit of shading underneath his mustache because it is so full. I believe this is what they traditionally call a walrus style mustache. Mustaches have names. I didn't know if you knew that. Styles of mustaches have names. I believe that's a walrus. But anywho, and then also underneath her glasses a little bit. Uh, the E04 is going to be my darkest color. It looks really, really dark when you put it down. Fear not, when you put that E11 over it, it's really going to blend it out. And then um, again, just moving toward that lightest color so that the highlight is kind of like at a diagonal on their faces because they do both have hair on the right hand side that would cast a shadow. For my little lady over here, I'm going to use that R20 to give her just some like circle blush on her cheeks. And then I'm going to cover both of their faces in the lightest color, which is the E50 to blend everything together and blend out her blush. For her hair, I'm trying to think big picture. So when I was planning this, I planned the whole card, like how I would do the whole shebang, um, and then I broke it down from there. So I know later on I'm going to have some brown in the card, so I want it to be complementary. I don't want a whole bunch of different colors that are competing. And I love the E50 family, except for skin tones, because if you watch that other video, you'll notice that I make the comment that E50 families look make people look dead, so don't use them for skin tones. But for hair, I love it. I'm using a very light flicking motion and the tip of my marker to just add some strands. I'm leaving a large highlight, especially on the right hand side, because that's where the light would hit. So for hair, her hair to look shiny, I need that white area. But anywhere hair is gathered, and at the part is where it's going to be darker, where it comes out um, from behind her neck, not that she has especially long hair, but where it comes out from there, it will be darker and that highlight will be the lightest portion. So I wanted to bring in some color um, and I opted for red knowing that there was going to be a lot of blue in my card. So I'm coloring his tie red and then her lab coat red. So, I mean, I suppose it doesn't have to be a lab coat. It could be a trench coat. It could be one of those little wrap dresses that look like a blazer, but it's actually a dress. Anyway, I just thought it would be cute um, and the card as a whole to bring in a little bit, a uh, little pop of color. So again, I'm coloring her coat the same way I colored his. It looks like the left-hand side is on top, so I'm adding shading to the right. I'm also adding a little bit of shading to her pocket underneath her collar, and then a lot to the left-hand side where it would be in shadow away from my light source. When I go through and color things, I leave myself a very large highlight because I tend to be heavy-handed with my darks, and I want to make sure that I reserve that highlight because that's how you get any sort of dimension. Um, for the darkest color, I'm only putting it really in my darkest areas. So where the collar is folded over on the right hand side, where the jacket comes over on the right hand side, and then underneath that pocket. Um, and then we're going to start blending back out. Now here you can tell I'm adding substantially more color, but now I have a much better idea of where I need to keep that highlight. So it's okay. I'm more comfortable. If you can do it all in the first shot and you're happy with your blending, do that. If you need three or four times to go over it till you're happy, totally cool. Do that. It, it's all, um, it's all learning curve. So whatever works for you. I brought in some navies. I don't know why, but in my head, navy is like a neutral. Um, so I thought that it would be complimentary to my scene here. And then it definitely will be later on when we start building the whole thing up. So for his little short trousers here, I'm not really sure which they are. I feel like they're trousers, but he's kind of, um, he's built sturdy, if you know what I'm saying. Short body, sturdy. Um, so I can't tell if they're pants or they're shorts, but they're cute nonetheless. So for there, I really just added shading to the left hand side and then inside of the like thigh area on the right. 
I'm going to make her, I'm going to give her a little navy blue dress in the background and again concentrating the shadows on the right hand side. I hit up their shoes. I used the darkest brown that I used from her hair for his shoes and I used the darkest navy for her shoes. I'm going to color that little pencil on her hair with that Y08 and then I'm just going to add a little ground underneath them with a C1. Now I'm going to add a little bit of detail because this is a very simple card. It's a very clean and simple card. Not That doesn't mean that it's not cute or that it's not or that it's less than any other card. That's not what that means. It's just very clean and simple. This would be very good for um, if you have a coworker who was promoted or a um, niece, nephew, son, daughter who's going into maybe a science program in um, college or had some sort of project that they did really well on. Um, so I just, that's how I, you would, I personally would use this set. So I outlined all my images, I add a couple of little details with that white um, gel pen, and then I'm going to put some clear one Castell on it, and then I'm going to call it. If I was creating this card, I would add sequins or embellishment drops or something to draw your eye to the sentiment, but since we're going to build it up, I'm going to leave it here. So this is level one. I will have level two up tomorrow. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will catch you on the next video.